starting on the first beat. Concert F, concert E flat. Kathleen Kennedy, who was the producer of E.T., came to my office one day and said, wouldn't it be wonderful if we could have the film of E.T. but have the orchestra playing live? Without thinking about it, I thought, it's a fantastic idea. On reflection, I thought, oh my God, very difficult. That's like doing a two-hour opera without an intermission and without a chance to adjust anything, you know. The film, it's exactly metrically, unyieldingly what it is. So the timing has to be either completely right or it's totally wrong. Now make sure you don't put this on any protruding parts like rails or teeth. We're here in the beautiful Shrine Auditorium in Los Angeles, which is an enormous theater. I think it must seat five or 6,000 people. And we're going to have the new release of E.T., beautiful new print up on this big screen. We'll have the orchestra, a full symphony orchestra on stage to do the music live with the dialogue, which will be, of course, pre-recorded on the film track. This morning, I think we should just read through this whole show, and then this afternoon we'll deal with the problems of synchronization and so on. The entire orchestra is mic'd and is being fed to a room in the back to Sean Murphy, who's mixing all the music together. That mix is being fed up to Andy Nelson to a mixing board. Andy Nelson has a direct feed from Sean Murphy as well as from the projection booth and the projection booth has the dialogue and effects. Well, this is amazing. I can't believe you constructed this. From, there was nothing here before. There was nothing. This we is started, seating yeah. Monday I mean, morning. I mean, I've been to the Oscars here in this venue yeah. many times, and there's been nothing up here. Right. Uh, we started Monday morning, and uh, we had we put the booth and the floor up uh, Monday by Monday afternoon, and all this gear went in on Tuesday, and we were able to run picture and yarn once. You're like a mobile artillery unit, you know, just from one battlefield to the next. That's exactly it. In the projection booth, we have the dialogue and effect stems. We have two main projectors that are projecting up to the big screen. In case one goes down, we can back up onto the other. And the fourth projector is the projector that is videotaping John Williams' scribed print with all of his cue marks on it. So I'll see these and they'll begin to move. The only one who's going to see that is John Williams down here on a monitor. And he, that's what he follows to conduct the orchestra. I run the clock for John and tell him when the cue starts, 30 seconds before, so he doesn't have to look at the screen all the time. Be very careful, people. So don't, don't think, ah, oh, I've got the tempo locked, because you haven't. You have to be prepared to, to modify it. The difficulty for musically, maybe it's difficult for people watching this to understand, but the film is about two hours long. And in each minute of that, those two hours, 120 minutes, there are probably a half a dozen or a dozen music cues. Which means to say that when E.T. moves his finger, there's a little bell that goes with it, or when you, the obvious ones, when he lifts off the ground, the orchestra does a big swell. So we have to go through this whole two hours mathematically trying to make the orchestra exactly in sync with the action and the dialogue as it's supposed to be. You're looking good, John. Sorry? You're looking great. I've got you on the big screen. That's great. <laughs> We have a little quasi-overture, which is a piece of music based on the E.T. themes, which we will play before the film. And Stephen has prepared some shots, some very beautiful shots, of some of the members of the orchestra playing flute, French horn, and so on. So if we have the music exactly in sync with that film, it will seem as though they're playing the music in the film, with actually playing it on stage. So that's again another feat for us if we can accomplish that. As far as I know, this has never been done before. You know, we have done silent movies, but to present a film with the entire interlock thing of all the dialogue and all the sound effects with the music, I think, certainly for me first time, and I don't know of it having been done before.
I think it's gonna work. It's pretty it's cool. It's gonna work great. <laughs> It's a wonderful return to an old friend, really, and musically an old friend, and to have this opportunity to perform it, which will be tomorrow now with a live audience, to get the buzz, the electricity that will come from the audience, I think will be, I'm sure, quite a thrill. because this is a premiere, so it's a benefit for the Special Olympics, and just as it was 20 years ago. Yeah, it's, you know, you, it's a great celebration and a wonderful party, and, you know, but to be able to do something so meaningful and philanthropic alongside just makes you realize everybody's priorities are in the right place. The live orchestra is going to be amazing. First of all, I think it's a celebration of live music, and this is a hundred-piece orchestra. It's a 50-foot screen. It's an optimal presentation of film and music. It just is, is, is an enhanced experience to kind of enhance the memory you had of E.T. from 20 years ago. nice for the younger generation that hasn't seen it yet to be able to go to the theater and see it especially like this this is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity ladies and gentlemen welcome to the 20th anniversary of ET the extraterrestrial we're about to witness and participate in a breathtaking high-wire act as this symphony orchestra plays the score of E.T. as the film plays. And now, please welcome the Recording Arts Orchestra of Los Angeles and maestro John Williams.
Thank you. Thank you so much. May I, uh, may I do a, since we had a living orchestra playing to our 20-year-old movie, may I do some living end credits, please, and introduce you to our costume designer, Deborah Scott, special effects supervisor, Dennis Murin, Dennis Murin, Director of Photography, Alan Davio. <laughs> Creator of E.T., whose heart is as big as E.T.'s, Carla Rambaldi. <laughs> Producer, Kathleen Kennedy. <laughs> Composer, of E.T. and 19 other films we've done together, John Williams. And as important as any introduction I've ever made, screenwriter Melissa Matheson. And the cast, Peter Coyote, D. Wallace, Robert McNaughton, Drew Barrymore, and as Elliot Henry Thomas. Ladies and gentlemen, you have embraced E.T. and you have made the last 20 years feel like 20 minutes. Thank you so very, very much.